Oh boy! Chat, do you know about Jonathan Doyle? He's a little bitch. Kids right now, especially Gen Alpha kids, which are kids under the age of 10, they see gender very differently. They experience gender very differently. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect time to introduce this new doll line that is truly gender neutral. Yep. Introducing Creatable World. A doll line designed to keep labels out. Look at this cool fucking doll. Where's that kid at? One in. Everybody, look at that. That's so that's so interesting. Also, this kid, fly as fuck. I like the fact that, yeah, the doll looks like them. That's nice. I invite everyone in. Not a fan of dolls? Are you an adult? Yeah, me either. But kids do. Yeah, this guy's a dork. He's a huge dork. Uh, 174 United Auto Workers. Interesting. Interesting. The United Auto Workers? Is this guy driving around a fucking union vehicle but being anti-union? Interesting. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because YouTube has been trying to censor conservative channels. No, it hasn't. It censors everyone, you little bitch. So that they can't, quote, influence the 2020 election. As you saw in the video from Time Magazine, we've got toy companies promoting and normalizing gender dysphoria to our children. And I know it may seem like fun and games, they've got funky and colorful outfits, and they're just dolls, but no, what you saw is actually evil. Because if you are condoning the normalization of this to our children to any degree, you are evil and you should be put in jail. And I mean that wholeheartedly. Oh boy. Uh-oh. Huh. The conservative, freedom-loving American thinks if you have a different opinion, you should be put in jail. Interesting. I'm, I'm shocked. Truly, I'm shocked. And we'll get into the data behind it, but I first want to take a second to address our <laughs> friends in the audience who have abandoned this idea of social conservatism. We see this a lot in young people, this notion of, well, I'm fiscally conservative, but socially liberal. I don't really care what you do so long as you don't raise my taxes and... Yeah, why are you... Imagine being socially fucking conservative. Wow. This guy is socially conservative? Oh my god. I need to talk to this piece of shit. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, yeah. Allow me to present you with the train of thought that I had, which compelled me to break out of that type of thinking. All right, train of thought. Here we go. If you're a conservative, okay. in the traditional sense, you have to be conserving something. And because it's a term that has to be interpreted within a specific context, and because we're interpreting it within the American context, because we're conservatives in America, that means that we're trying to conserve the American way of life, which includes that men are men and women are women. The American way of life also says things like, b b black, 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 black people aren't really like we could own them. Is that something you're for? Is that something you're for, bud? Chief? Pal? Tiger? Is that something you're good for? You think that may- like, w at what point do we stop conserving American culture? At what- where's the breaking point? Where's our line? Is it only in the 1950s? It's before civil rights ended, but after slavery, so it's the sweet spot. Hmm, we can get away with it because, like, we just beat the Nazis in World War II, but also, I secretly want to be a Nazi, so it's good. What the fuck is wrong with you, you goddamn idiot? But more importantly, your point of defense is basically lost. Because if you're a fiscal conservative but a social liberal, okay. and you're like, oh, well, I'm not really too concerned with this. People can do what they want to do. Well, in case you haven't noticed, what they want to do is promote and normalize delusion in society. Delusion? What's the delusion? He's got a lazy eye, I can't unsee it. He can't unsee it either. Uh, because he's seeing double. And so he'll just see two of them. Because of the, la the lazy eye. Yikes. This fucking guy is like, I don't want delusions! Wait, he's the bad guy. He's the bad guy. Bad guys are zooms. I forgot, I forgot my own rule. I don't want delusions, cause men have pepes, and ladies got vagoos. Well, have you considered that, uh, no? Have you considered no? That's not necessarily the case. But how will I know if someone's got their pee-pee out? How will I say, how will I know the di the difference? What, maybe you could, you could ask? 
you could ask them? Well, I, I'm a white man. I haven't asked anyone for anything in the history of ever. I just usually take what I want. That's kind of the problem and the issue that a lot of us are addressing when we bring this up. Well, have you considered the fact that it makes me uncomfortable? Have you considered the fact that I don't care? But I'm a white guy! Yeah. So am I. Uh... And you're just gonna... You're just gonna have to be okay with it? It's kind of just how the world's... How the world's going. I want to die in Minecraft! And I want you to. And I want you to. They are trying to redefine the most obvious and undeniable truth of humanity, which is that there are men and there are women and the two are different. And you don't get to choose which one you are. And understand that once they can convince the culture that men can be women, women can be men, mm -hmm. gender is just socially constructed. It once is. they can achieve that, they can achieve anything. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, guys? We can fucking follow our dreams. Are you kidding me? Once we discover the fact that that gender is just a social construct, we can accomplish whatever we want. Woo. If they can convince the society that gender as we know it and as we've always known it is incorrect, do you really think that society will at that point still be reasonable enough to hear you recite your favorite free to choose argument in favor of low taxes? Like, hey, I know that men and women don't exist and everyone gets to decide their own gender every day of the week, but if you're- No, 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 wait. I mean, well, okay, so. For right now, men and women do exist. I'm a man. You can't unman me. Just because just because you don't want gender to exist doesn't mean that I don't fall in line with that gender or that someone that's part of a binary or someone who's even non-binary, they're still the gender, right? Some people who are agender might disagree. Um, but there's like the the concept of gender is so incredibly fluid that like what 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 you being a man is definitely not what I find to be a man, right? I'm not, I'm not a man in this guy's eyes, almost certainly, right? I had the purple hair for a little bit. It's a little, it's a little grody at this point, but fuck it. Um, I have a little, I have a beard. This child does not. Uh, we both have corrective lenses, but as you can see, his eyes are all wonky, and mine, even without, are straight just like my sexuality whereas this guy i think could definitely be a nice bottom i'm probably more of a top let's just be real whereas he has a weak chin and a and a, and a, a subtle jawline i have the jawline of a motherfucking chad okay look at this fucking thing look at it i also have a neck beard because i didn't shave today but don't worry about it, okay? Because he doesn't have... I, I have extra hair because he has very little. He's His swim times are probably nuts. Due to his, his literal lack of testosterone. But that's okay. I may be molding, but this is a... This is a... This is, this is high testosterone, high T. Low T. Low T. I'm just tossing that out there, okay? Alright. Just saying. I'm a Chad. And you're a virgin. You come home from work, your kids greet you at the door. Daddy! No, not even daddy. It's just like, parent, parent, parent! I mean, you could still you could still be daddy, but I mean, if you're not if you're not a guy, then yeah. It's time for my hormones! And you're like, it... The children don't take hormones. What? Children, what? We don't give children hor hor hormones. It sure is, pumpkin. You know, the kids line up. They're all transitioning. You just give them puberty blocking hormones because they all decided that they were the opposite gender when they were like five. So you give them the hormones, you're whistling while you do it. And you over here on the news, just the president signed into law a new tax code, which raises the average American's federal income tax by 2.7%. And you just say to yourself like, my goodness, what does this country come to? Are you telling me that how much money you have is more important than your children and then the other children of this country? Let's what are you talking about? Uh, okay, so if you can, you can definitely be uh, both not wanting to die in poverty and uh, uh, appreciating the fact that your child might be trans. Uh, Elias in Wonderland with Twitch Prime. I've been watching you for years now. Since before I came out in trans, uh, before I came out in trans, before I came out as trans in 2014, I really appreciate the inclusive community of Cultivated Thanks. Hey, no problem, Elias. It's... It's pretty simple. 
If any of you guys want tips on how to be inclusive and to have a good community, here's the tip. Uh, just stop caring what people do because they're all valid. That's the whole thing. I was trying to think of more. Um, nope, I, I just love you. That's it. That's the whole thing. Let's face it, the ta I don't even have to not- No, no, don't be a dick. I'm a dick all the time. I don't even not have to be a dick. Tax battle is basically beating a dead horse at this point. That's not where the battle is being fought right now. I'm sorry. The battle is being fought at the idea of gender identity. Be the battle? The battle that you lost? Because you have leftists in your children's schools telling them that they should question their gender identity. Identity. No, they shouldn't. They well, no, 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 no. No one is saying, child, question your gender identity. What they are saying is, hey, if you do question your gender identity, we have a pathway for you. Yeah, like, like I think in this gender identity, this guy is definitely less manly than me, right? Like, let's just be real, right? And I think that's fine. He doesn't have to be... I know he made fun of him, but I mean, like, he genuinely doesn't have to do anything to be the man, a man, right? This guy is a fucking cunt, right? This guy is an asshole. He's a piece of shit. And, like, he's, he's, he's still a man. If he says he's a man, and that's okay, that's fine. He's not a man in the way that I view manhood. Uh, in, in so far as how I apply it to myself. But he's a man in the way that, like... I accept him as such, and that's all it, all it means, right? We are trying to conserve. And if you fail to actually conserve, the machine of leftism will mow down whatever pasture you've left unmanned. The machine of leftism. I mean, let's just let's just go down the history of the world, okay? History of the world. There there's lots of conservative things throughout time. For instance, uh, Jesus was a big ass progressive. If this guy, I mean, he's got a he's got a Jesus bobblehead. I assume he's a Christian. I have no idea if this guy's actually a Christian, because who fucking knows? But uh, I would assume that, uh, and it's written down in the Bible. There's lots of conservative Jews in the Bible that are against the things that Jesus is saying. He 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 was a reformer of Judaism, like not all things that are progressive and left leaning are bad. And, like, so, so far, like, I don't know when this guy wants to go, but a progressive thing is, like, not being racist, not being pro-slavery. Like, these are all progressive things. Progressivism always wins historically. In this case, that would be gender, since everyone's apparently more concerned with how much money old Uncle Sam has taken out of my paycheck. And that's the problem, because people are going to be like, oh, John hates transgenders. John hates gender non-conforming people. No. Incorrect. What I hate, what I abhor, is that there are people out there who try to find meaning in their lives through indoctrinating our children into believing this delusion. I don't hate trans people. I just think everything that they are doing is delusional. What? No, I don't hate the blacks. They're just not, I mean, IQ, phrenology. Don't you know? IQ and phrenology? Don't the blacks just have weird, like, I can't believe, they're just not capable of all the mentals that it takes to be a person. Would you say it always wins historically? Regressive things like recriminalizing homosexuality happen in some countries. No, it always wins. Historically. Yeah, even if there's a step back. Yes, it always wins. I don't know how you can say that I don't hate the gays, I just hate everything about them. Like, what? That a man isn't really a man, that a woman isn't really a woman, and that they exist to do that. So understand that this notion people have of like, oh, well, no one exists to do that. What is he talking about? Does he think my entire existence is an advocation of LGBT people? Because I do a lot of other shit. I just happen to have to spend a lot of fucking time on it because of people like this fucking guy. I mean, look at this fucking guy. This is my competition right here. This fucking alpha male. This top fucking lobster. You can see his sticker right here. He has won the fucking lobster hierarchy. Look at him. Swimming upstream or whatever fucking lobsters do to win the hierarchy. This is my competition. And the fact that you keep bringing this kind of shit up is why I gotta spend so much time on it. Do you know what I was doing today other than that? I made tacos. I made tacos. You think my, most of my life was spent talking about gender? It's about... It's about 5% of my life. 
5% in only my professional life. 5% of my professional life I have to talk about gender. Come on, dude. Well, it doesn't affect me, so why should it matter? Well, it matters because it affects our children. It, it matters because it affects your children. You know what else affects your children, whether you like it or not? You could get rid of every liberal, lefty, social liberal. You could get rid of everyone that even glances glances at advocating for LGBT people, and you know what would still happen? You know what would still occur if you could get rid of every one of us? You'd still have gay kids. You'd still have trans kids. They'd still exist without me. I don't need to exist for gay people and trans people to be things. They still exist. It's no one's fault. It's just how they are. Framing it as a fault in them is fucking horrible. They're people. They just don't want to fuck what you expect them to want to fuck. And they don't want to be called what you expect them to want to be called. That is what you're arguing about. You are arguing that children need to grow up learning to fuck who you expect them to fuck. And act how they want to act and be called what you want to call them. This is a you problem, not a problem for anybody else. You're a piece of shit. It matters because they're trying to normalize it to our kids. Do you understand how young and naive kids are? They've been here for like five years. They You're one of them, what? They don't know anything. They just learned about gender like three weeks ago. Now they're being told, by the way, you can decide your gender. They're like, oh really? Oh, okay, well I didn't know that before. Wow, now I do. Learning things is pretty neat, huh? huh? Yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing. I know he's making a joke here, but like literally, yes. I didn't know you could choose your own gender. Yup. Whatever feels right, that's what you are. Whatever feels right. You don't have to wear pants, or a skirt, or shorts, or jeans, or you can wear whatever you want. Wear t-shirts, wear blouses, wear a bra, who fucking cares? Be happy, be the person you want to be. Whatever makes you the happiest, whatever makes you feel most attractive, whatever makes you feel fucking good about yourself. That's that good shit, okay? You shouldn't have to feel guilt over the fact that you're a fucking person and you have a beard and you want to wear a dress. That's fucking dope. I wish I had that kind of body confidence. Also, I wish I, I don't want to wear dresses anyway. I feel like that would be, well, I feel like a kilt would be pretty comfortable. Like just the bottom part. I don't like to wear underwear. I don't feel like I want to wear a dress though, right? So that's like the difference, right? Because dresses I identify as something that's feminine and I don't feel comfortable being feminine, so it seems pretty obvious that I'm masculine. And for that, we use the word man to describe. Someone who overall identifies with masculine things, uh, likes to express masculine, typically, you don't have to, uh, and likes to be called masculine pronouns. Correct. These are all things about me. It's pretty boring, but these are all things about me. And that's okay! It's okay for you to be also called a man, even though we clearly have different definitions of men. You are a small little baby child without a hair on him, except for that little mop on top that I'm not even confident is in the wig. I mean, you're just a little pubescent tiny boy, and damn it, I'm gonna call you he, him pronouns, and I'm going to say that your version of manhood is just as valid as mine. Do you know how damaging it is to prematurely sexualize a child? Do you have any idea? Gender has nothing to do with sexualization. What? You've got increased likelihood of casual or unprotected sex, increased likelihood of drug and alcohol. Uh, you have increased likelihood of unprotected sex if you don't teach them sexual education. What? All abuse, increased likelihood of becoming a victim of sexual violence, increased likelihood of anxiety. And that's what this does. Even something as simple as these dolls, because gender is inherently sexual. What? Wait, what about gender is sexual? What? What? I'm sorry. What? What is the fundamental difference between men and women? Uh, typically masculinity and femininity. Is he gonna say peepees and vagoos? The difference is pertaining to their capacity for reproduction. Peepees and vagoos. Mostly, actually, that's gonads. Technically, you don't need a peepee -pee to reproduce. You just need gonads. And because of that, even introducing into the conversation these ideas that, well, gender's fluid. That opens the door for these children to be presented with things that they don't need to be presented with. 
like Drag Queen Story Hour. What's wrong with drag queens? It prematurely sexualizes children. You've got a culture that embraces and celebrates pornography, both hardcore and softcore. I mean, little Timmy can't even go get a Twix bar in the checkout line without seeing a Kardashian mostly naked on the front of a magazine. We've got the average age that a child is exposed to hardcore pornography being 11, 11 years old. Uh, yeah. Average age of puberty. 12. Be 10 and 14, 12 and 16, which means by the time you're 11, you've got friends that are 12, and you've got people looking at their phones. Yeah, you're going to see some fucking porn. You've literally never seen a magazine like that? I've seen a couple magazines like that, maybe, in my life. They usually hide them. What the fuck is this guy's problem? What's wrong with sex? I don't believe this guy didn't watch porn before he turned 18. Oh, of course not. This guy touches his dick constantly. He's touching it right now. This guy's an actual fucking psychopath, though. But now we've got a cultural narrative that serves to promote gender dysphoria to our children to convince- No, 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 it doesn't promote gender dysphoria. What are you talking about? Convince them that before they're even tall enough to ride most roller coasters that you get to decide your gender. And you think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden we have a rise in gender dysphoria. A co it's not a, of course, oh my God. Coincidence that now 27% of adolescents in California identify as gender non-conforming. It's This isn't a rise. Okay. They said the same shit about gay people. I'm sure this guy's anti-gay. I'm sure he's homophobic. They said the same shit. Here's, here's the real deets, okay? Here's the real fucking tea, all right? We got a sip tea. This is steeped in, in Dr. Pepper. Mmm. Mmm, Dr. Pepper. So... This is the way it works, okay? There's like no gay people. Gay people are only 1% of the population or 0.01% of the population. And then a bunch of gay people come out, okay? A bunch of gay people come out, visibility rises, and then guess what? Oh shit, everyone was just underreporting because it was a social faux pas to be gay. It makes sense that you'd have underreporting and then in the last few years, the numbers are on the rise, but really, it's just reporting, right? It's just people being out. What you need to do is wait about 10 years, probably, until the moral zeitgeist, like, shifts fully. Then you'll have correct reporting, uh, close, you know, plus or minus, your 2% or so, whatever, for your, for your control. You'll have a rough estimate on how people are. Like, actually how they are. I guarantee you the .01 statistic, it's already antiquated today. I guarantee you it's going to be continually. This is an awful thing to be doing to our kids. And is they maintain it? that, well, we're not really doing anything to the kids. We're just creating an open and more accepting environment yep. for people who have really always been this way. But now, since society's more accepting, they're comfortable with expressing that. Maybe. Maybe. We've seen the rates of LGBT people in America increasing every year, but interestingly enough, the only statistically significant increase is coming from the younger generations. The younger generations that, frankly, never really lived in a version of America that they would perceive to be unaccepting. Yep. The reality of the situation is that if the society were becoming That's more accepting, expect. prompting long-closeted members of the LGBT community to finally be able to express themselves... <sighs> no. No! Ah! You're seeing that increase anyway. What you're seeing before that is that, <laughs> and this is, this is really interesting, right? The really interesting part here is that sexuality, we're finding, can be, you can, you can, you can shake off people's biases, right? I might be, I might be more inclined to like entertain the idea of sex with a dude I don't think so, but if, like, I was raised in, a, in an environment that would have not negatively shown that, right? Like, kind of like the Romans, right? Like, not every Roman engaged in bisexual or homo, homosexual sex, right? Not every Roman did, but a lot did. I don't think I'm a very good example of this, but someone that, like, um... 
because I'm pretty fucking woke and I don't want to suck your dick. So, like, uh, you know, people that don't necessarily consider that, like, oh, oh, you, you can like both? Or I can like the other one? Didn't really think about that. It's probably closer to both, right? I think, I think bisexuality or pansexuality, whatever you want to call it, uh, depends on uh, kind of where <laughs> what, where the gender binary is at the time. I think that you'll find that there's 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 more people that kind of fall somewhere in the middle than just on either end. You'd see the trend be about the same for all age groups, but it isn't. The increase in LGBT Americans is being caused almost exclusively by the younger generations. And also, on that note, if you're going to make the argument that America's rate of LGBT people is increasing because we've become more accepting as a society, you cannot also make the argument that LGBT people are oppressed in this country. A rise in the number of a demographic does not mean that they're suddenly not oppressed. It, being oppressed doesn't mean like you're just fucking constantly like, in a cage. Just oppression and everyone faces some level of oppression, right? Some just face less than others. That's the only thing. Oppressed isn't this fucking catch-all. It means I am 100% oppressed or 0% oppressed, right? Like, if you're trans in the United States right now, you are oppressed by different things. But, like, I'm not oppressing you, so you're not 100% oppressed. You're just more oppressed than me, right? And that's okay. We have, I mean, it's not okay, but I mean, like, it's okay to admit this, right? There are different levels of oppression, and that's just how it fucking is. And we try to address these layers of oppression, and we try to make sure that it doesn't carry over into a way that negatively... Uh, impacts people for a long period of time it's called intersectionality jesus pretty much um like there's the intersectionality of uh person a is gay person b is black and gay person b is oppressed in different ways than person a both of them experience oppression both of them try to work together to experience less of it i mean that's pretty much it that is intellectually dishonest, my guy. And the true agenda here is, of course, to just redefine objectivity and to redefine truth. Because again, if they can redefine gender, and if they can convince you to buy into it, they can convince you to buy into anything. And the great strategy that they have by which they can demonize any opposition to this is to claim that being transgender or having any other gender identity than what you were assigned at birth, which is a mental disorder, by the way, according to the DSM, uh, that is caused genetically. The reason people have gender identity disorder, the reason people have gender dysphoria, it's because of genetics. They were born like that. And so the best thing that we can do is to help them and to support them and give them access to hormones. At what okay, he cites the DSM, but doesn't cite that, while I agree with the DSM, I agree with the DSM when it says that that's a mental disorder. I don't think it is. Um, it's a D oh, Here's the DSM saying a thing. But also, the DSM also says that, like, the treatment for that is transition. But if you're if you're one of these conservatives that are like, I'm for freedom, what greater freedom is there than the ability for a, for someone to chop their fucking cockles off? Just chop those suckers right off your body. What greater freedom is there? Is there? Chop those cockles right off. That's freedom. Okay? Whatever age they request them, why might they want to claim that it's a genetic condition? Very simple. If it's a genetic condition, then to speak out against it would be wrong. If people are truly born that way with gender identity disorder, gender dysphoria, whatever, we wouldn't be able to justify criticizing the normalization of this disorder. And that's why anyone that speaks out against this is a transphobe. Well, you disagree with any aspect of this and you're transphobic. And the thing about it, is that we know that it isn't a genetic condition. Virtually everything about human beings is influenced by our DNA, but very few traits are hardwired from birth. All human behavior manifests because of varying degrees of nature and nurture or biological factors versus non-biological factors. And the best way to determine the degree to which those disorders are caused by biological factors would be to look at twins because twins have virtually identical genetics and they're exposed to the same hormones during pregnancy. So if genes and or prenatal hormones contributed significantly to transgenderism, we should expect both twins to identify as transgender close to 100% of the time. But in the largest twin study of transgender adults published by Dr. Milton Diamond in 2013, only 28% of the identical twins both identified as transgender. 72% of the time- Wait, there was a 28% chance that if one transgen- Wait. Of- Wait. 28% sounds fucking huge! That's- that's nuts! 
What's the word you use? Concordance? That's fucking huge! If it's higher percent for twins than unrelated people, doesn't that support that it's genetic? I would assume so. 28% is ridiculously high. Even the American Psychological Association's Handbook of Sexuality and Psychology admits that prior to the widespread promotion of transition affirmation, the vast majority came to accept their biological sex by late adolescence after passing naturally through puberty. That's a huge number. But that was, that was back in the... Yeah, but adults are the ones who fucking transition what are you talking about back in the olden days of like 10 years ago so what are we doing now well we're giving these kids puberty blocking hormones because obviously if your five-year-old son decides that he's a girl you want to get a are puberty are puberty blockers hormones i would like to know what are pu oop, puberty blockers a type of medication which affects oh it blocks. It's a horm It's literally just a hormone blocker. Look at that fucking... You guys like chemistry? Look at that shit. Be a chemist and learn people... Learn how to change people's fucking bodies. It's that cool shit. Get him nice and pumped up with hormones so that he never experiences puberty. Because how uncomfortable would that be if your five-year-old son ended up having a lower voice? Forget that your five-year-old son has a dick. The biggest obstacle to him truly feeling comfortable in his identity as a girl is the fact that his voice is going to drop. So you better get him some hormones. And are the hormones safe? No. In fact, the FDA just released data that shows about 26,000 serious adverse reactions from taking one of the most popular hormone blockers and about 6,400 deaths between 2014 and 2019. Hey, remember when Trump was going to ban Vape because like six people died or something maybe he should look into banning this type of treatment being given to kids who haven't been diagnosed with precocious puberty which is what it was intended for because kids with this condition began secreting pubertal hormones at an unhealthy level too early in their development gonna have to look this up puberty blockers death uh 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 by the Christian Post five days ago. Well, I can't fucking trust that, can I? Uh, viral fake news story linked to trans health. Okay. Recent article publicized by... Oh, that was life site news. Christian... Wait, I'm sorry. Is that who fucking he cited? Amanda Prestigiacomo. Okay. Is that is that this person right here? No, that's Brandon Showalter. Amanda, what was her fucking name? That's a terrible ass. Presti Giacomo. Amanda Presti Giacomo. Oh boy. Uh, puberty. The Daily Wire. Jesus fucking Christ. So the Daily Wire. <laughs> this is Ben Shapiro's shit right here. The Christian Post. The, these all go back to the Christian Post. Where's the Christian... The FDA documented? Seems like pretty fucking fake newsy. A little fake news? Fake news? Recent article published with blah, 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 story on viral and right wing, blah, blah, yes, yes, yes. The th problem is the thousands of people who die while taking these drugs are likely the terminally ill cancer patients who receive hormone blockers to fight hormone sensitive cancers like prostate cancer, according to experts. Ah! There it is, boys. Boys, girls, and those betwixt. There it fucking is. Surprise. Was this hard? Was this it took it took me like 2 seconds. Joshua Safer, a profession of a professor of medicine and the executive director of the Mount Sinai Center for Transgender Medicine and Surgery, said Lupron or Leo Leoprolide acetate is used for treating precocious puberty, infertility, and certain types of cancer, particularly prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is worsened by the presence of certain hormones, so people fighting this disease are sometimes given hormone blockers, puberty blockers, to slow the cancer's progression. I think all they did is went to the FDA database, looked at reports, there's no study here, that's just a big smorgasbord of reports, and so the problem with that is that you don't even know what those deaths are connected to, uh, the agents they're reportedly connected to. 
Uh, much more likely, the 6,370 deaths over four decades the FDA listed connecting this drug are terminally ill cancer patients who are prescribed Lupron as a palliative, or palliative, not a curative treatment. I'd be very surprised. Hold on, does we're gonna we're gonna go back to that one more time. Puberty blockers death. Uh, the Daily Wire. This is this is that one. Does this mention? Does this mention cancer at all? Control F cancer. Shocked. Zero mention of the word cancer. The drug or the the. <laughs> what about prostate? Prostate. No. The number one reason this is given, prostate cancer, is not listed in the Daily Wire. Huh! Weird. So weird. Is that weird? Anybody else think that's weird? Maybe if 75 to 95% of prepubertal children will outgrow their gender confusion, maybe we shouldn't be pumping them with dangerous drugs that try to eliminate the possibility of them outgrowing their delusion. And this brings us to the final question. What's wrong with being transgender? What's wrong with not identifying within the traditional male-female binary? And the answer to that question is nothing. Other than the fact that your identity is a symptom of delusion, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I really couldn't care less about it, to be honest with you. And I 12 minutes in. By the way, I don't care. By the way, I don't care. 12 minutes into caring. I truly wish you the best of luck with your condition. And I mean that because these people are suffering. And it's wrong for us to make fun of them. It's wrong for us to ridicule them because these people are truly not mentally well. And acknowledging that what they're going through is a mental disorder is not to insult them. It's just to recognize the reality of their condition and try to support them. But the way to support them is not to pretend that what they're going through is normal. And it's certainly not to promote this disorder to our children. Those children who then go on puberty blockers, and there's evidence to suggest that going on puberty blockers then inevitably causes them to decide to take cross-sex hormones to help them feel closer to their identity, whereas had they not taken those puberty blockers, they would have grown out of it in almost all cases. And what happens when you take puberty blockers as a child and then take cross-sex hormones? You become sterilized. That's a significant consequence. And because the consequence is significant, there's an element of risk to undergoing this process. And because of that, we have to ask ourselves, do children have the necessary capacity for risk assessment? And the answer to that question is no. Children are not cognitively developed enough to assess risks. Not only will any neuroscientist tell you that, any parent will tell you that. The problem is that to ask that question, even though it serves to question what is best for the child, that's inherently an obstacle to the agenda. And because of that, it's offensive and you can't say it. How dare you question my eight-year-old's gender identity? How dare you tell my eight-year-old that you know their gender identity better than they? Yes. Well, I dare because I can look at them and tell which gender they are. And I dare because- You can't though. You genuinely can't tell. What? I just look at them and I can tell what gender they are. Isn't that right, little girl? I have a penis! Whoops. Right? What? No. You cannot tell. My... This is a true story. I was so beautiful as a baby that my mom intentionally dressed me as blue because she didn't want people to misgender me. She was accidentally being woke, even though technically she assigned my gender, but it turned out I was, I was correct, so it didn't matter, right? Because we know that the suicide rate amongst transgender people is extremely, extremely high. And the reason for oh, that God. is not because they're ostracized by society, oh. it's because they're mentally ill. No, it's definitely because they're ostracized by society. The attempted suicide rate for transgender people who have stated that being transgender has had, quote, no negative impact on their quality of life is about one in three. And based on the 2017 National Survey of Drug Use and Mental Health, it's estimated that about 0.6% of adults in this country have made at least one suicide attempt. That's 31% versus 0.6%. And they said it's not... 31% of 0.01%, right? not because they're transgender or gender non-conforming. If it was because they were being ostracized by society, they would have said that it's negatively impacted their quality of life. And granted, the ones that stated it did have a negative impact on their quality of life were more likely to attempt suicide. But that doesn't prove anything, because obviously anyone that believes their quality of life is made worse by something is going to be more likely to attempt suicide. What matters is that we have the variables isolated. We know that transgender and gender non-conforming people who say their attempted suicide rate has nothing to do with how being transgender has affected their quality of life one in three. 
The national average is about one in 200. One in three versus one in 200. Do you see the problem? And we also know that the methods for treating this condition, which are methods that seek... There is nothing in the diagnosis of, I assume he's specifically talking about gender dysphoria, there is nothing in the diagnosis of gender dysphoria that would, that would presuppose that someone is going to be prone to suicide. What that typically leads to, however, is that people with gender dysphoria tend to also, due to the factors of being j dysphoric their entire lives and having to deal with it and suppress it instead of meet it head on, because the entire society is against that, historically speaking, you would expect someone to have anxiety and depression due to these types of things. This is exactly what you expect. Now, anxiety and depression do lead to this type of thing, but it's due to the societal implications of it, right? And burying it and saying, no, it's wrong to feel this way. It's wrong. You're supposed to be a man. Be a man about it. You're sp That's not how ladies act. This is, this is what you're supposed to do. Seek to treat it as if it's not a psychological condition, but rather an endocrine related condition with your hormones and such methods such as hormone therapy, genital surgery, breast removal, etc. You know, all that fun stuff. All of this has shown no reduction in the likelihood that they attempt suicide. In fact, it typically even increases the likelihood that they attempt suicide. So, from this information, we know two things. Firstly, the ah! All of this information is incorrect, for the record. The reason that they're committing suicide is not because of how society treats them. And secondly, the way to prevent them from committing suicide is not to provide them with hormones and surgeries. And in fact, that's actually been shown to increase their likelihood of suicide. We already know. I love, see, this is the part of the argument where they're like, but I actually care about them. No, you fucking don't. You don't fucking care. What? You just made an entire video about how it's a delusion and we should tell them it's a delusion. And then also like, but they kill themselves a lot when the treatment is to accept them. That's the treatment. How can you be so fucking contradictory?